So thank you. I again last last panel today. So if somebody interesting, it's that I know the people down there are on the way in the back. Also there are some people, and uh, I uh, want to warm welcome our panelists today. So please, guys, if you can go uh, go up here. I think we have. Uh, we were talking about use cases and how OpenStack or you know open uh, whatever around uh, OpenStack it's a uh, good tool for use cases, right? That's what that's what you want to build. I just sit next to you. Yeah. Thanks. So today we have Jonathan Bryce, CEO of OpenStack Foundation. Uh, we have uh, Mark, sorry. Baker from uh, Canonical, Joseph Sandoval, well-known uh, person in, in San Francisco, in Cloud area, and Mark Rappaport from uh, Juniper. Great, and we will talk about use cases. So, uh, with Cloud, first question is well, it's really an you know, easy one. What is your favorite use case for OpenStack itself? I start from Jonathan, and My, uh, my favorite use case for, for OpenStack, it's a, it's a good question. There are a lot of different uh, variety of use cases. My favorite uh, right now is probably the uh, Raspberry Pi, <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> Kubernetes, conference instrument instrumentation. Um, I don't know, it's, it's awesome because there are so many different ways that people are using it from um, traditional workloads at, at, at uh, enterprises uh, to some really interesting things that are that are um, pushing the envelope on, on what people think is possible. Uh, one from the recent summit that, that I think had a pretty big impact was AT&T came and spoke about their OpenStack rollout. AT&T is the largest integrated carrier telecom company in the world. And uh, they talked about how since the iPhone launched, uh, traffic on their network has increased 150,000% in less than eight years, and uh, and that basically breaks their business model <laughs> that they've that they've operated under for for decades, and so they have to totally change you know what what they are doing and, and how how they manage the network, um, and they have OpenStack deployed in 74 data centers of production, and they have millions of their customers um, on their mobile network that are running on top of infrastructure powered by OpenStack. And I think that's that's a pretty awesome use case, certainly not one that uh, when we were launching OpenStack. Back in 2010, um, I would say certainly not one that we saw on the horizon at the time. So but, but I'll, I'll lead off with that one. Sure. So um, I think I mean my favorite use case is is probably the, the use cases that, uh, where it's easiest to demonstrate OpenStack is adding real value, right? So and it was very clear that OpenStack is saving money or delivering things faster, and and even though it's not particularly exciting. Um, you know, I uh, not may have mentioned this in his talk this morning, but the LAMP stack, right? The typical kind of web infrastructure stuff. It's very, um, it's very clear kind of case, uh, use case, clear value case, uh, where OpenStack can enable you to provide very kind of flexible, agile infrastructure and scale up, scale out, scale back again very quickly and easily. And the value demonstrated to the business is, is very, very clear. So even though LAMP's been around for, for forever, it seems, um, Running those type of workloads on a, on an OpenStack environment, I think it can be very compelling. Yes, yeah, so for myself, you know, I come from a very you know from the enterprise. That's been my experience running large data centers, and you know as kind of mentioned earlier by Mark, you know I, I really look at you know it's not just doing technology for technology. So I really like enterprise use cases where you really are tackling some of the business systems, and especially right now we're seeing the applications becoming more cloudified, and it's great to see that. You know, you have these applications now that you can scale, you can grow horizontally. Before we had to really think very vertical, and now that we're able to kind of present these kind of design patterns into the enterprise and actually change their business and seeing that impact and being able to, you know, realize like great capex and you know savings and being able to really have your teams, you know, automate things and you have recoverability. Those are the use cases I really love to see to know that, you know, because of the cloud that you're able to provide an infrastructure that you truly can rely on and can really help you to grow and scale. Okay, um, I will second Jonathan on the uh, telco cloud use case, and I'm a bit biased by my background coming from a telco and service provider. Um, I really, I'm really impressed by uh, AT&T core project where 
they plan to repush the envelope by deploying OpenStack across thousands, if not tens of thousands of sites, not just the large data centers, obviously, but every single small CO, any basically any small site that is uh, uh, hosting uh, a base station or any endpoint telco equipment. Uh, that's going to power the next generation of uh, telco use cases like being able to support machine to machine or IoT type of capabilities, run some kind of uh, workload really close to the end user. Yeah, I, I heard one of your interesting, inter, inter, interesting work, and that's qualifying. No, because what's what's cloud application now? What's called the cloud native application right now? That's also really you know difficult. Now there, there are some cloud uh, native foundation, for example. There are some use cases for application like Qualify. But what's what's mean? You know, basically what we see in OpenStack are used for whatever you know big clouds like AD and D we mentioned. And also, we have OpenStack, our partner OpenStack, and Raspberry Pi over there. So it's a huge variety of, of use cases. We cover the most, most biggest and also the smallest almost. Not the IoT and, and, and the scale. But the cloudifying, it's, it's something, you know, we, I personally uh, know many companies, enterprises, telcos, banks, and customers like that. And they still rely on really old technologies, 15, 10, 15 years old. You know? Do you think same like me that the cloudifying, the application, the know-how, how to do it, how to not just, it's not about build cloud right now, exactly, because today we see 10 ways how to build OpenStack in from 8, from 30 seconds to 30 minutes, right? So there's no problem to build infrastructure, but move your application into this. Do you think that this is, uh, you know, really soon or, or sooner than in some years? Well, this, this is the this is the some breakthrough in this area. Like Kubernetes, for example, it's much more easier right now. Alex, Alex D, much more easier. You know, it's again, it's something between container itself and, and virtual machine. I know everybody knows virtual machine thanks to VMware. But do you think that this is you know be even faster? You see how the market goes faster in, in that way, and, and the know-how in the planet because in, if the know-how it's still just in are communities like this, but do you think that it will expand and do you see an expansion of this know-how through everybody else? You know, storage guys, networking guys, you know, all these enterprise kind of, uh, um, you know, divisions or, you know, IT guys? I can go first. Um, you know, I definitely see that, and, you know, when I'm, when I'm listening to what you're saying, Adam, you know, the one things that really stand out to me, there's definitely, a rapid change of technology change. I think me and Lockheed were just sitting there a minute ago and I'm showing Lockheed, hey look, first unikernel platform coming out, which is just like tip of the spear, really, really out there. But there's something even more than just that. I, I look at it just in my experience and what I've seen you know, happening, and whether it was through the public cloud journey or through OpenStack journey, uh, you're, you're, you're seeing that it's actually more of a, a transformation of like people, process, and the culture of now how you're adopting these technologies. And that's what I see is like if I look back at this journey with like OpenStack, you know, from where I was in the past to now, now that I'm able to kind of really apply it and see how it changed the culture of our business and how it enabled us, I think those 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 things are, are very interesting. And it's gonna and because of that, it's pressuring these technologies to move forward them because we want to go faster. When I speak to my CEO and he looks at all these technologies and the things that were changing, he's, his thing is like, you know. His ROI is like, are we moving? Are we moving our software faster? Are we getting better quality? And so there's pressure. But in Austin, the one thing I, I think you was really brought out that I thought was very well done was that uh, there was a mentioning about like open source and the collaborator diet, and we're seeing this new paradigm really shifting. So I think as you get more and more people collaborating, it's going to be pushing that ball forward and forward. And we're going to see continual iterations happening. So that's really what I as what, what I'm seeing from from my landscape. Um, what I see in the telco world is that there is this uh, tension related with how to run this virtualized network function that come from the traditional telco world, uh, and there is a huge uh, pressure to try to move the uh, the ones that are generating uh, the most impact slash revenue on the on the telco network, like uh, virtualized packet core, virtualized IMS. At the same time these applications, or most of them today, 
are really not cloud native. They are very, um, very legacy in all, all sense in terms of expectation from the hardware, um, redundancy, state synchronization. And that definitely creates some tensions and friction in terms of the capability of these telcos to, to deploy and accelerate uh, the deployment of these uh, network functions. So one key factor is going to be the, either the rewriting of this application using cloud-native framework, but that might take some time or that might also um, be pretty costly. So I expect that the next wave of, um, of application deployment will be more like for brand new uh, use cases. Sure, so um, I guess genetics is to certain is that you're either uh, evolving or you're, you're dying, right? And, and the same is, I think, true for many businesses is that they need to continually be evolving and, and evaluating how they're bringing products, goods or services or whatever to market, uh, certainly in comparison to their competitors. Um, but change is hard, right? And, and so in the genetics world, we all have compelling reasons to, to, to evolve and, and reproduce. Um, businesses, especially if they're sat on a currently successful business model, it's, it's, it's not always quite so clear. So, um, but those business models crumble very quickly. So I think that it is changing. We are seeing enterprises understanding that how they need to evolve and how they need to accelerate what they're doing with technology. Um, whether they're doing it quickly or not, I don't know. There's certainly balance right, to be had. There's no doubt that so most of the people in this room are, uh, are sort of looking at CI or CD, could use integration and doing stuff with Jenkins or running from trunk and sort of living on the edge. Um, most businesses aren't there yet, but I think most businesses understand they need to be more agile, more flexible, whether it's OpenStack or whether it's containers or combinations of both, uh, and uh, looking kind of quite seriously how they can move that forward. I would say that, you know, change is hard, you're right, but it's also, you know, absolutely necessary if you if you don't want to die, <laughs> especially in the technology industry where uh, technology cycles get shorter and shorter and, uh, and you know if, if you are in the industry you know you, you constantly have to be learning and, uh, and, and reskilling yourself. But I think that uh, what we are seeing is it's not just about cloud, it's it's actually a bigger trend that includes cloud and also um, you know a, a, uh, with OpenStack, for instance, and, and some of these other technologies like Kubernetes and OpenShift and Cloud Foundry, we've talked about all of these today. They represent a shift in how technology is also produced and consumed, um, which is which is a, another big piece of what's happening right now. Uh, you go back 15 years, um, which is not that long, really, in the span of human history, but in, in the technology industry, you know, it, it, things have changed dramatically and how technology is produced, and how open source technology is viewed, whether or not you can use it or not. Um, we have, we've been on this tour of, of a number of different OpenStack days, and we've talked with, with organizations of all kinds, from government entities, and, uh, and academic institutions, and enterprises, and you know, most of them have gotten to the point where open source is, is something that they, that, they, uh, that they view on par with commercial offerings. Not always, but, but most, of the, most of the time. And so I think that is putting us into um, a situation where we're starting to see kind of a generational shift. And that's what it takes for, for things to really um, speed up dramatically. We saw that with, in the late 90s and the early 2000s with the internet and the World Wide Web and, and things like the LAMP stack and Linux. And I think that, uh, that, that we're right on the edge of that happening for the next 10 or 15 or 20 years with cloud technology with a different development model and also with, with open source as, as being viewed as, as really a primary way that, uh, that people um, get technology. You know, they collaborate together and, uh, and it's not just on, on dinky little projects, it's on critical systems and you know, the more that the people collaborate then the more work we get done and the more, uh, the more money we make and the more lives we save and you know, everything is, is a it's, a, it's an awesome way to, uh, to, to use technology and to build it together. Yeah, I, th I think that that's the point, you know, that's culture change. It's everybody almost, you mentioned culture change, or there's a, not no problem, but there's a challenge in, in, in people to, to move forward. You know, it's a really, really good idea, and, and one of the keynotes at OpenStack, uh, Austin, 
was, was really good that this is uh, in you know cloud native world and 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 developers and you know enterprises see the market and they they see uh, like small companies are agile and, and quick and they change product and they are able to customize and they are very personalized by each each person each you know user and because I talking with these with these enterprises talk to those banks uh, they they traditional IT it's absolutely different they they people need some more care about and. That's what I mentioned, you know, because open Six Summit in Barcelona, for example, for everyone here, and today you can want a free ticket, right? So uh, there's, for example, the certification, the unmistakable certification, where you know people from outside could really quickly during the five days get some get some knowledge. That's that's the culture change we need, you know, more and more these days, and more and more uh, uh, hackathons and everything around, and that's that's. That's the community change. That's how we proceed forward. And I see it because we started, you know, a few years back, and we, lock, you know, like years or uh, one year, just using OpenStack. You know, we don't contribute, we don't talk with anybody because we don't feel that we can, you know, that we have enough information, enough know-how to just ask at the, at, the, at the list. But in the end, where we start, I realized that that should we should do it from first minute. You know, just ask at the OpenStack because. The community is so huge and so welcoming that it's so easy then you know start. It just need the first leap, you know, just the step and you're inside. That's that's what I what I know. That's 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 the biggest challenge, just first step in into some communities. Yeah, and, and I think that's a really good point, and that's that's why these um, events that, that we do in uh, in we're gonna do about thirty different open stack days all over the world this year. And they're so important because they give people an opportunity to to see the community and to you know meet different people from around the world that are part of the community and then to be able to take that first step and and that is always the hardest thing with with technology. Um, <laughs> uh, we were uh, we were just in Israel a couple of days ago and and uh, you know uh, has anyone ever ridden a camel? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, uh, when you get on a camel, they're they're knelt down on the ground, and then they get up, and it's you know it's 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 pretty uh, it, it's pretty dramatic. <laughs> it's a very sharp angle, and so you know, starting the camel ride is difficult, and uh, <laughs> and it's it's unbalanced. But then once you're up there, you know, it's fine, and, and you know, it's it's a great ride, and that's sometimes how it is with uh, with any any thing like you know, open source especially. It's difficult to get started, there's a big ramp up, but then once you get in, it's awesome to be part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's great to see. Great, great camel example. Um, I, just, I just want to ask Joe, because I know he built the whole team you know, for OpenStack from the beginning. Now, what's the culture challenge you face with a company, you know, startup basically, or a company that should be agile enough that, anyway, what 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 do you find out during the during during the video team? So it was a it was an iterative journey. I mean, the one thing that we kind of had to realize is that you know we always kind of had this saying when we were tackling OpenStack because it was it was a broad kind of scope of what we were trying to get accomplished. And and on top of it, we're running a business. You know, we're, we're our our focus is not because we're operations. It's that we run a SaaS. It's B two B, very challenging. And what, what it really kind of put brush on us is that there, were, there definitely was some prerequisites that we had to get right. You know, so if I had to say, you know, where, where do you start? You know, it, it started with a lot of our automation, like how good we could get with that really started allowing us to be able to really think of like our infrastructure as code. And, and we had to go and do some evolutions with it. We had to start really understanding that, you know, we, we, we had to guarantee that we, when we did bring something up and we wanted to get to production workloads, there was some, you know, decision making that we had to think, and, we, and the, the core components that were really critical for us were storage, you know, network. We needed things that were really rock solid, stable. These are things that we were going to base our business off of. So, you know, those are the things I would really encourage when you start taking this journey is to, is to think about, you know, the, those parts of the components so that you have a really good experience. But it started moving us forward because then we started looking at. It wasn't so much the infrastructure, but it's like, can we enable our developers to consume this infrastructure? So it really started making us think about the toolings around it, like, you know, how can we really make things self-serviceable? You know, you know, how can we, you know, help our developers so that, you know, they can easily just, you know, get to OpenStack. It's a cloud. It's a provider, and and provide a really good kind of journey for them. So those are the ones that I would say that were really core for us to be successful with it. It also was like we talk about like even the people, like bringing on the people that, 
could really understand, you know, what was going to be needed for them to kind of like, we no longer were just siloed in our network stores and all these other environments, that these were all like converged now. So, you know, you definitely had some individuals who had very strong expertise in these, these different areas, but over time, a lot of us were able to kind of really, once we started looking at things as infrastructure as code, we were able to start really like allowing others and extending these things so that we really were able to kind of manage our infrastructure at scale without increasing, you know, the, the operational headcounts of our team. So that's the stuff on that journey that now when I look back, it was just, it, it, it changed how we look and what, what we consider to be done. Because a lot of times in your traditional enterprise, you know, infrastructure, you stand something up and it's then you say, all right, we, we, we've accomplished something. But we, because of DevOps and how we looked at what our infrastructure was, we realized that we needed things to kind of roll forward. I think it was outlined earlier today in one of the talks, we were showing some of the day two challenge. And that became when we knew we could consume and safely be able to update our software, be able to back up, be able to recover and prove it out. That's when we knew that, how transformative it was for us. Yeah. Mark or Mark, do you want to add something? <laughs> Yeah, don't hesitate, it's just Mike, you know. It's sure, so, um, I, I mean, certainly when we're engaging with customers on site, uh, we definitely see the, the silos being a big problem. So between network storage and compute, uh, often we see upset as a pilot going great until the VMware team in an organization wakes up and starts asking difficult questions like, what's this other hypervisor stuff going on? Uh, and we need to get over that. So the, the, the projects that are successful are those where they absolutely converge those teams together and, and make them jointly responsible for the success of the project and get people you know, through that kind of initial inertia. Um, the other one is, is security, right? Working in the telco space, I'm sure Marvel will appreciate this. Security teams, you know, we think we've got a good story around security in OpenStack and then we go meet the security team of whoever it is, Deutsche Telekom or somewhere, and, and they re-educate us completely. So, um, uh, and there's a lot to be kind of like the whole two-factor thing, Keystone and all those areas, that are a lot to get over. But uh, as long as there's an attitude about, okay, how are we going to fix this? But it's only within the organization, and then as that pulls out into the open stack community, then, then we can get through it, right? As long as they're not seen as immovable barriers to deploying the technology, then, then you can succeed. And did you meet that kind of the attitude in the Deutsche I wasn't using them as a specific example. They have very stringent, they have very stringent security requirements, for sure. Um, and, but, a lot of the feedback is completely valid, right? And, and there it's about hardening and whatever it is, the, the cloud controller services and bits and pieces. That's all good stuff, right? So it's things that we need to appreciate. But and they're, they're not any different, better or worse, than, than any other telco in that respect. They all have very high bar as far as security is required. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you know, audience started asking questions itself. So do we have more questions if, you know, at this point? No hands? No, no one? We have you no know, best panelist in CE right now about cloud. There's no questions. And I think that this today's session must be great, you know, because all the information I answered already. So, <laughs> so uh, I I have one uh, one other question. That's uh, and that's the future. What do you want to see, you know, in the future? Like, what do you want to see in the cloud? Like, do you want to migrate all the workloads and use the cloud as a universal, you know, safe? Uh, Safe, you know, safe place for all applications. And do you think that there's, uh, you know, we still, right now, we are talking about use cases, you know, nice use cases we like. We are talking about uh, how to push the know-how to administrators at the, at the industrial level, you know, and, and, and silos and everything. And, but we don't talk about developers yet. And that's, that's another question itself. Now we're talking that ops uh, do DevOps, right? <laughs> that's that's how ops uh, that's how ops view ops view operation point of view that we have very robust cloud we are able to build whatever we want but how developers then react if you if you have any experience about it, that I think that's audience will be you know <laughs> again curious about how developers will react if you change all the iteration infrastructure they VMware VMs you know they 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 always run in the desktop they build some one silo VM or two silo VM, and they then just do it. Let's run somewhere, you know. And we change the pipeline absolutely. CI/CD. Um, I think Mark Mark uh, mentioned it. it's crucial for cloud native application built con continuously. And what about the developers? That's that's my question. Someone? 
Well, I think, you know, you know, I'm, you know, based out of San Francisco, so, you know, in the, my last journey, the one thing that, you know, I had was, is interesting was that, you know, there, the public cloud is used very often, there's a lot of, engine, there's a lot of developers who get it, so that's a tough challenge because they're going to press you on the private cloud, does it equal the same feature sets, and I have to really refocus them back on, this is the core things of what we're trying to, you know, solve, we want to automate the provisioning of compute storage network, we want to make these things repeatable. Then we had the other side of the house where a lot of our engineers had no cloud knowledge. So, you know, they were comfortable in just going in and pointing and clicking. And I'm trying to evangelize to them the need that, yes, that's one way to do it, but here, here's another pattern that we have so that you can easily provision and keep reprovisioning and actually set it up so that you don't wake up in the middle of the night, you know, scale up or down. So, you know, I, I see kind of like both sides of it. And that, you know, and what I have to realize is that. You know, it's, it's a journey that you need to bring your developers on, and you've got to enable them to really get, what, what I, I, you know, and I, I think all of us know the, the MVP, so we really were targeting, like, what are those quick MVPs? Let's help them get up running really quickly with their new service, and that they really get confidence with it, and then we can kind of iterate, and we know we're not 100% feature complete about what we're offering internally with our private cloud, but that we can, we can solve these business asks that enables them to go quicker and help them to see that, then they start to embrace that methodology. So for us, that's really where it started from, is that we really had to start providing those easy onboarding, those tools to get them going, those, those simple hello worlds that would just give them the concept and then they could apply that to their project. And then we started seeing that embrace really happen internally. Developers are you know, obviously a, a really important audience. And I think that uh, the, uh, in, in uh, I think that's really the defining difference between cloud and virtualization. You know, virtualization is is usually used as a tool to uh, to make an IT team or an ops team more efficient and uh, and make the running of, of systems more efficient versus a way to to really uh, supercharge what what developers can do. And uh, and you know, in the first um, few years of OpenStack, we've been very focused on on operational capabilities and the services that create programmable infrastructure. Uh, you know, basically the plumbing of, of the, the internet and, and of all of our businesses. Which, you know, I've, I've been in the infrastructure business for a while and, and, uh, and it used to be really boring for people. <laughs> and nobody wanted to really know about what happened in data centers. And then, you know, we've seen that, that lately people, um, especially the last few years, have, have cared a lot about that because uh, ultimately, you know, you have to change that, that foundation um, to you have to have you have to have uh, plumbing that works <laughs> in order to, to be able to do the, the things that are are really important and um, and so now I think we're at a point where we have solid services in, in the core areas uh, and like Monty's talk today was really all about you know not about which services you deploy and how you deploy Keystone how you deploy Nova but it was it was really about how do you think about writing applications what whether those are traditional enterprise applications, or whether those are 12-factor applications, or whatever it might be, IoT. And, uh, and, and so it's exciting for me to see that we're kind of making that shift. And I, I think that's a great thing that you identified as, as the future. Um, and you know, just for, uh, for those of you who are looking for other ways to, to get involved in OpenStack over the coming year, um, as you leave this event, uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of developer resources online. Um, you can go to the OpenStack.org website and see videos and content targeted at application developers. We also have a site developer.openstack.org with resources for how to program against OpenStack clouds. And uh, we've just started to, to um, organize a series of application hackathons for developers um, over the next year to 18 months that are going to be happening in different locations. Uh, so I think you know, this, this, that's a, it's a great point to bring up and it's definitely something that the community has, has started to have a, a much stronger focus on and is a really key part of where we need to go now and you know move beyond just the infrastructure services and, and really talk about why we're doing all of this it's so that people can build great applications faster. So um, I think developers like to avoid having to ask permission or ask for uh, approvals and things just like to be able to get on with a job and, and most, um, most people agree I think that the world, as we look out towards cloud, is going to be very hybrid. There'll be people, um, workloads that sit well in public cloud, those that sit internally. 
and, and removing, ensuring that the developer experience is going to be very similar, whether it's in one public cloud, or another public cloud, or an on-premise, on-premises, OpenStack cloud, I think is, is key here. If you have to learn the intricacies of all these different environments, um, then uh, it's going to sort of limit or stifle some of the ability that people are going to have to do. So it being open, freely available, easily accessible, and having commonality between the different platforms is, 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 is going to be key because workloads are going to gravitate to where the most efficient platform to run them on. And that's oftentimes going to be OpenStack and other times going to be Azure or, or Google or wherever. Right? So being able to provide that consistency between them I think is going to be key. I think the telcos are a bit in a different situation than the examples you guys just mentioned. Uh, if anything, because their core assets and competency is more about operating a network at scale. And sure, they had some ventures in trying to build applications that they monetize directly on top of their network, but they haven't been that successful in the past. So I think right now they are more on the upside of, of the uh, journey, trying to really optimize and streamline their network using these uh, cloud technologies and probably more providing a platform that third-party application developers will use to build this uh, next generation of machine-to-machine uh, -machine and IoT application that we ride on top of their distributed network. Yeah, we're just Thank you very much. I think this was awesome. Well, awesome talk. A lot of information, you know, about you know from from from, from beginning to operation. We started the use cases. We talked to uh, deploy you know, obstacles in the way how to build successful cloud. It's not just about the stack. It's all about all infrastructure, about the developers, about your users. And we repeat that this is about people, right? This is be, people are always the key. And OpenStack and communities is the enabler to let right people do the right job, right? And that's what I want, you know, strongly suggest to everyone that we have networking party just after this session. So just about two minutes or two, no, three minutes. So please everyone go, go down there and start networking because that's the future for everyone. And just one last question. It, or I ask audience if there's some past one last uh, question from audience. Still no one? So, I have one uh, backup and really pleasant question for, for Czech people. So, what, about, what do you think about Prague, right? Just, just or oh, Czech Republic, you know, you could be more, more general. <laughs> no camels, no camels, right? <laughs> the, the beer was good. <laughs> beer was good. So, Joe? I've been here 15 years ago, and this time's even been better. So, it's, it's great to be to meet the people, and it's exciting to see OpenStack, you know, coming to Prague. Yeah, I think it's it's awesome to see like uh, like open source grow. You know, we are in Prague, Czech Republic, and there's not too much uh, open source conferences. Yeah, there's some of, of course, not no international, but we have awesome speakers from all the, all the part of the planet. You now that's that's what I see. That's uh, again uh, something else about OpenStack community. It's it's really global and it's really pushing its borders. You know, all around it, all around the globe, so we can you know go get the, all the knowledge you know, we want. So. Right. Uh, to be honest, I arrived last night completely jet lagged from San Francisco, <laughs> and I barely managed to wake up this morning <laughs> to present. Um, yeah, but I'm counting on tonight and tomorrow before flying back uh, yeah. tomorrow afternoon to have at least yeah, we have a chance. To we have special cure here in, in Prague, and that's the beer, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Awesome, awesome speakers, awesome information. Uh, thank you all for audience, and uh, right now. Ah, uh, you're free. You, you can go go for beer right now. One last thing: we have two draws right here. Uh, one, uh, it, this is the gift from OpenStack Foundation uh, from to anyone. I hope that all these gift cards, someone, someone I can draw from it. So first will be uh, the free ticket to OpenStack Summit in Barcelona this October. And second one, there is the drone from Red Hat, right? So first, I, I try to, yeah, I try to be really, yeah. it's not so, yeah. So, Stepan Musica, Atlas Technologies.
Is here. No. Is bad again. <laughs> so, Milan Sikora, in the Czech Republic. Here. Takže gratuluju a uvidíme se na samitu v Barcelony. Uh, and, uh, and now I welcome Bradford here to... Okay, so <coughs> thanks for the opportunity. Uh, today we heard uh, a lot of about, about the cloud, how easy and difficult or difficult it is to get there. And we would like to give a chance to one of you to get uh, closer to the cloud in a very easy way with this drone. Yeah. So hopefully the winner will really enjoy it. And if I may ask you for, to make a game because you have been so successful to to yeah, draw. It. To draw, yeah. so please do so. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I just think. Okay. So, uh, by the way, as usual, the one who is here can win, not no one else, of course. Yeah. So, Tomáš Sapák, Masarykova Univerzita. Ah, it was good. Oh. Okay, so I hope that you will get into the cloud in a busy way. Okay, thank you very kindly and yeah, enjoy the networking party. Thank you everyone. Awesome, awesome women. Do you have a last note here? Be careful. <laughs> Uh, so we are slowly nearing to the end of the, today's con conference, uh, so once more I would like to thank for attending and being part of uh, OpenStack Day Prague. Uh, many thanks to uh, OpenStack Foundation for support and all the speakers for uh, share, sharing their journey. Uh, we look forward to OpenStack continued success and being the cloud of the future. And. Uh, uh, please, um, all of us um, move to the cafe where it will help networking party. Yeah, one, I just need your hands again once more, last stuff. Uh, just to thank uh, Hannah Schulz, she prepared all this event uh, alone with all the sponsors and everything. So please, yeah. if, if you are sad, uh, thank you. And this is not the end, networking party right now. Beer, wine. Some food, everything for you.